Let's remain standing just a moment now for prayer. Lord, we want to thank you for your goodness and for sparing our lives and for the privilege that we have of coming to thee on this cold winter night, knowing that we are just the dust of the earth, but inside us is a spirit that lives forever. And we pray, Lord, that tonight that you will forgive us of our shortcomings and let us prepare our hearts to meet thee in that day. These little brittle threads that we're walking on called the threads of life, we don't know just what time they may break and plunge us into an eternity. But as David of old said, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. If we go through the valley of the shadow of death, you're sure to meet us. Keep us in perfect peace, Lord, as our hearts are stayed on you. Heal the sick and the afflicted. Get glory out of the service and bless these good people who has gathered here tonight on this cold night defying the weather just to come to hear the word of God. I know you'll send them away with a good full meal of thy goodness. For we ask that in Jesus' name, thy son, amen. Be seated. So very happy to be in tonight. And Billy come back just a few moments ago and said, Daddy, there won't be a hundred people there on a night like this. Now, we Southerners kind of have a little, you know, kind of a thin blood, maybe. And if this is cold weather to us. Coming on the elevator a while ago, the colored girl said to him, she said, what, the Reverend, she said, this is just fine weather. <laughs> I like it. I really do. I think that this is very good weather when it's dry and cold. Any weather is all right as long as the Lord is there. I wish to hurry right in now and read the word to you and then immediately speak and we'll pray for the sick. And tonight we expect God to do the exceedingly abundantly for us tonight. Uh, <clears throat> You know, some of the greatest meetings I've ever been in has been where just a little group was gathered together. See, you got it all kind of confined down to just a small group, sometimes like a house prayer meeting. I was just telling Brother Sothman today, I said, I was coming up to Houghton, his hometown, if the Lord willing, between the meetings to go fishing with him. And I said, I'd like to visit the little church out there. And he said, well, it's just a little small group. I said, bring them over to your house and let's get into the room and shut the doors and stay there all night and the next day just talking about the Lord. That's the way I like it, just, uh, just where we can get together. Now, Christ comes in big crowds or little crowds or he, he'll walk alone with you just anywhere you want to meet him. And your heart's right. He'll meet with you. I just want to take a little short subject tonight, the Lord willing, and I don't know. You know, evangelists sometimes, when they're busy through the day with interviews and people coming, going, sometimes you don't even get a chance to look at the Bible. And I just picked up a little piece of paper a while ago and I had wrote something on that I had talked on before, somewhere, I don't know. But I thought I would use it for a text tonight. Maybe it hasn't been in Chicago. And now the Tate boys are here. My boys, Brother Leo, Mercer, and Jean. And now they have the Tate chair uh, for sale. And as I was saying the other night, we don't sell them on Sunday. And through the weeks when you have to buy them, and I'm sure these boys, I've known them for years. They were some of my kind of a converts when they, these two young men, one being formerly a, out of a Catholic home and the other, I don't know just where Brother Gene come from, what his people were, perhaps Methodists or something. And they come down to the meeting just to get a general conception of it. And the Lord spoke to them. They followed on down to my home just as a little 
FBI outfit of their own to find out if those visions happen anywhere within the meeting. And it just happened to be that the Lord just simply uh, did some great things right there and the, when they were present to see it. And I have called them my students, fine boys, real, real Christian brothers. And I've learned to love those boys and they're honest and square and they wanted to go along to something in the meeting and I let them go and take the tapes because we had no one who really took them and uh, any official one and so they went to take the tapes and wanted to know if they could the people begin to want the tapes I said boys as long as they're not too high for the people and I ordered a tape here some time ago from an evangelist and I can buy three of our own tapes, the same tapes, for what I had to pay for that one. So I know they're pretty close to the, just the cost. And that's the way we want to do it. And the books that I get from Mr. Lindsay, who he was here last night, he knows just exactly what, they're not mine, they're his. We buy those books, and he gives us a little cut off of them. Then we have to pay the freight on them coming. Then we have to get someone to go sell them. In there, you lose many of them. And just on a close margin, and the books, even if I print them, I don't think they would ever pay. So the campaign holds them up. The picture, it doesn't belong to me. That belongs to Douglas Studios. We have to buy them and sell them for what we pay for them. So therefore, you see, it's not nothing at all that, that we have anything to make any commercial off of. We're just do it, and they wouldn't be here, none of them, unless it was something that you asked for, and we can let you have them. So they're at the stand somewhere, and you can tell your friends and those who want to receive them. Now, to the Word. In the book of St. Matthew, the Gospel, the 12th chapter and the 42nd verse, I wish to read just a little portion by the way of some, to get some context. Now, the 42nd verse and the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. I like to think on this, that when I have just read a portion of the eternal word of the eternal God and how every little word in the Bible you can lay hold on it because it's the truth and man through all ages as they read it they get something new there's something about the word I was just talking to Mr. Lindsay today in my hotel room and I have noticed the visions and he spoke to me and he said, Brother Branham, sitting on the platform last night, I was watching how the Spirit is beginning to even greater than it used to be. And I said, but what startles me that it just simply seems like it may be me, that the people just can't grasp it. He said, they probably won't. As you spoke from the platform, it may be you'll have to seal your testimony with your blood someday, and then these things will wake up and they say, well, we never knew that, and that may be the outcome. How that I know myself that truly, as a Christian believer, it comes from God. And I have never in one time ever seen it fail. And to see even this picture as a little boy, when I was only somewhere under three years old, I'm thinking about 18 months, you'd think, Brother Branham, you didn't see or remember that far. I do. And I remember when it spoke to me as a little boy and down through life, how I described it years before they ever took the picture of it. And now they've got three official pictures of it, one from Germany and two from the United States. Uh, the picture of the angel of the Lord, which scientists of Germany and scientists of the United States has put their seal upon it that it's a supernatural being described just exactly. That pillar of fire, to my opinion, and if I'm wrong, God forgive me, and as your brother, 
I think it's the same pillar of fire that led the children of Israel. I'm not saying that because it had its picture taken with me, because it's not to me, it's to the church, the entire church. Now, if we notice, we know that it was the angel of the covenant that, that led the children of Israel, which was the Logos, or Christ, the Spirit of Christ. And when he was here on earth, he said, I came from God and I go to God. And then after his death, burial, and resurrection, Paul, on his road down to Damascus, was stricken down by a light, same pillar of fire. None of the rest of them saw it. Paul saw it. It was so real to him till it put out his eyes for a season. Peter, he came in through a light, come through the bars into the prison and let him out of the prison. Now we see that scripturally it looks like it's the same pillar of fire. And watch today, it does the same kind of works that it did when it was in our blessed Savior, the Lord Jesus. And how that goes over the head of people, I, I just can't understand it. But, you know, it's certain things that it has to go, and then after it's all over, the people will say, well, I, I didn't really see it that way. It has to be afterwards, just like George J. Lacey said, the FBI head of the fingerprint and and documents of uh, a photograph that said it examined the picture. Now, in that year some time ago, a vision came and told me about going to Africa. And I thought that it meant go to Africa first, then to India. And the Lord spoke to me and told me to go to Africa first and then to India. Well, I thought that compared with the vision. And then I forgot about it and went to India first. And then he condemned me in Portuguese, as you know the story. And said, I thought I said to you, go to Africa first. And then I was condemned. And I thought all the time, and now it just comes up, the revelation begins to push me for Africa. And I read in the vision, and the vision really said, go to India first and back to Africa it's just exactly the way it's going to happen. Now, see, the Lord spoke to me knowing that I would fail, but the vision can't fail. It's what God has already said, and it cannot fail. The vision, I've got it wrote in a flyleaf of a Bible. I will bring it down maybe and let you see it. How that it really reads that I will go to India first and then back to Africa, but he told me to go to Africa first and then to India, knowing that I would fail, but the vision can never fail. God has spoken. It's got to be that way. Oh, what a day that we live in. What an hour that we're now confronted with. The end time. The thing of it is that people look today just like in our text tonight. Where did this come from? How is this wisdom? The carpenter's son. They don't realize that it isn't the person. It's the Christ, the God. Jesus said, If I do not the works of my Father, then believe me not. But if I do the works of my Father, if you can't believe me, believe the works. See? And then it's written, Although he had done so many things, yet they could not believe, because Isaiah said, Eyes and can't see, and ears and can't hear until he was dead, buried, and rose again before they really, the world realized that that was the Son of God. Now, God through all ages has had a way of manifesting himself to each and every generation through the ages. Either at the day of the judgment, there will not be one excuse for anybody at any time. The infant God has manifested himself to every generation in some outstanding, peculiar way. And God in sundry times, in divers manners, spake to the fathers by the prophets in this last days to his son, Christ Jesus. He's always made a way, and it's always been the supernatural 
that has attracted the attention of the foreordained believer and blinded the eyes of those who are ordained to damnation. That's exactly right. You cannot believe unless God calls you to believe. That's exactly right. The Scripture cannot fail. Jesus never come to earth just to say, well, I'll die and see who will be will have mercy on me and maybe they'll get saved. That wasn't the idea. He come to die who the Father, by foreknowledge, knew who would be saved. And he come to save that remnant that God, before the foundation of the world, knew that would be saved. That's exactly right. That no man can come to me except my Father draws him first. That's right. Not him that willeth or him that runneth, but God that showeth mercy. That's correct. Now, back in the ages, we want to base this little message around this. That back in the ages gone by, that God, when he sent something to the earth to declare himself to the peoples, if the people in general accepted it, they had a great time of jubilee. If they turned it down, they was rejected. Jesus here had been speaking to the people and doing miracles. He was able to discern the thoughts of the people and the well-trained scholars of that day of the church said he was Beelzebub. Now, when you go home, read this chapter and find out those scholars did not say out loud he is Beelzebub, but they thought it in their hearts that he was Beelzebub. And Jesus could discern their thoughts. The Bible said so. They were just thinking it. You don't have to say it out loud. God knows your thoughts. They were thinking in their heart that that man is a spiritualist. He is a soothsayer or some great chief demon, Beelzebub. And Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, then he began to tell them, Can Satan cast out Satan? If he can, then his kingdom is divided against himself. Then he made this altogether great statement. If you call me Beelzebub, I will forgive you. But when the Holy Ghost has come, and you blaspheme that, there is never forgiveness, not in this world or in the world to come, you will never be forgiven for it. Now, in the Gospel of St. Mark, as he quoted it, he said, because they called him an unclean spirit, the works that he was doing, discerning their thoughts and showing signs from God, they called it a devil, an unclean spirit. The work of God was considered an unclean spirit, and Jesus said it's blasphemy which can never be forgiven. What about America then? What about the day that we're living in? What about the unpardonable sin that's been committed thousands of times then? Times thousands of times. When the church and the great teachers and so forth say, don't attend that meeting, watch the devil, they separate themselves eternally from the presence of God. No matter how great they are, how much they've preached and what all they've done, God's Word cannot fail. No matter who you are, there's no respect of person. Teacher, scholar, Jesus said those Pharisees who were so religious that they had to come through a certain lineage and a certain birth, had to be trained and holy and just and honest and upright, he said, ye are of your father the devil. Right. 
The devil is religious and can put on very much pious and holiness actions. But God looks on the heart. Jesus said in a certain place, How can you speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart speaketh the mouth. Then if your heart thinks one thing and your mouth speaks another, he said, you are hypocrites. So that's what's in the world today greater than it was in that day. But now we see him as he, they are saying to him, this man is the Elzebub because he's a fortune teller. He's a, a soothsayer or some evil spirit. And Jesus referred back to them to the previous days of God's action. He talked of Jonah. Then he comes down to Solomon's day. Solomon was a great man. And he was the son of David and prefigure the Lord Jesus. Now his kingdom, of course, was earthly, and it perished. But the son of David, which is Jesus, his kingdom will never perish. And we notice that in the days of Solomon, and Jesus declared that the day that they lived in was greater than the day that Solomon lived, and how much greater then, even if the blasphemy would be forgiven then, and in this day, it cannot be forgiven. What a greater day this is yes. than it was then. Even when he walked in Galilee, his actions and his works today before man is far more sinful to turn it down than it was when he was here on earth. Oh, if the church would only wake up to these things. Now notice, in the days of Solomon, God sent a great gift to the earth. It was a gift of discernment. And Solomon had this gift. And oh, all of the nation believed it. All of Israel, with one accord, when they seen this great wisdom of Solomon that the Lord had given him, the whole nation rejoiced because that God had given this great gift. And you know, that's called the golden years of Israel. It was in their millennium as it was. Israel prospered more under Solomon than any other king I guess they ever had. Because they believed the gift that God had sent. If they had turned it down, they would have been whipped and taken out by other nations and so forth. And today, if God sends something and the church turns it down, how can we expect anything else but confusion? How can we expect anything else but denominations and barriers and setups and all kinds of impersonations and uh, everything today. Because we turn it down. When God starts to do something the, in some maybe a realm of people, the others will say, well, that isn't our denomination. Well, we'll just get our own man to do that. And you cause carnal impersonations, which is, evil in the sight of God and takes away from the real thing. That's right. When they had a little boy raised up some time ago, and I went to see the little lad about 10 or 12 years ago. His name was little David Walker, a wonderful little preacher. He didn't tell little stories like Mama uh, coaxed him how Jesus a little baby. He took off his coat and took the text and handled it like a man. And I have talked to some of the brethren. I had just been new in the full gospel realm. I didn't know they had the same trouble that we Baptists had of all kinds of breakups. I thought they were angels. And so then we find out one of them said, well, 
he belongs to the certain, certain group. I said, what difference does it make? Where his father belongs, he's the gift that God has sent to the church. I said, if you brethren would tear down your little different ideas and get around that little boy, not let him get all puffed up, but send him, he'd win thousands of little children to the Lord, little boys and girls. But what was it? Everybody got him a little David. Everywhere you went, I, the little fellow went to Miami and got in trouble, and I went out to help him, and the whole two pages was full of little David. Jealousy. It shows that it's carnal and not of God. Any church that'll do a trick like that is not of God. It can't be. And there's where we are today. They won't believe anything, but they try to impersonate it. And when they do, they have carnal conceptions of it. And when they do, they have carnal manifestations of it. It'll only produce it. But not in Solomon's time. They all believe that God had sent them a Solomon, and he was God's servant. And they all rallied around that gift. They didn't have 50 Solomons. They had one Solomon. And they never had 50 Moses. There was a man one time by the name of Korah. He raised up and said, Now, wait a minute. There's just as many prophets and holy men as there is Moses. Moses is not the only one. God said to Moses, separate yourself from him. And he opened up the earth and swallowed him in. The Bible predicts that in the last days that same thing will take place and they'll perish in the gainsaying of Korah. That's right. That's the scripture. I had noticed, but in Solomon's time, Jesus pointed them to the, the Solomon's time of that great gift Let's look at it. Now everybody begin to testify the Lord God is with us. Indeed, He is. For He has given unto us a great and mighty gift. Our brother Solomon, the Lord has given him the discernment that he can tell and, and uh, tell us the things that we should do and how the Spirit of the Lord is upon our brother. And everybody in one accord that began to spread out all through Palestine and went from nation to nation, from place to place, until it become worldwide that Solomon was God's servant and there was a great mighty gift sent from heaven that only heaven could send to a a church and to a mortal man could not do those things in himself. And all of them believed with one accord. And you see what it did? It built them a mighty temple. It gave them the wealth of the world. It gave them favor in every nation. All nations feared Israel because they seen the mighty unity among the people over a gift that God had sent them. Finally, way down in the utmost parts of the known world, there was a little queen, a heathen. And she's called the Queen of the South here, which was Sheba. And she was away across the deserts to where her country was. And everyone passing through would say, Oh, you should be up in Jerusalem. Up in Palestine, for they have a great God up there who has visited them with a great gift. And signs and wonders are taking place by one named Solomon, whom they have made king. You know, faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing. Now, how can the outside world believe when the church is condemning one, lifting another, and throwing this and out, and putting this? How can they believe? See? But not so then with one accord. Everybody was testifying. It was a wonderful thing. And the little queen began to hear this. 
Now, she was not of the tribe of Israel. She was a Gentile heathen. But faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word. And when you keep hearing such testimonies, it starts the curiosity. People begin to wonder, could it be so? That's the way, no doubt, the little queens begin to feel. And by and by, as faith kept building, she said, you know, there's only one way for me to be sure of this. And that is, I'll go and see for myself. That's the good thing. Don't take what somebody else said. Go see for yourself. Be convinced. And no doubt that the little woman had a lot to confront. And there was many things against her and against her going. The first thing, it was against her religion to go. Her church would not uh, cooperate in that campaign up there. But it didn't make any difference to her. She wanted to find out. She wanted to be sure. So one thing was, she had a long journey, and she was just a woman. And remember, in the deserts in those days, the sons of Ishmael was out there, which were robbers. And now the little woman, as just something inside of her began to tug that she just must go see for herself. I like that. When Philip found Nathaniel, and Nathaniel said, Now, could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said, Come see for yourself. Come be convinced. And the little queen thought the same thing. How much better off that queen was for her thoughts than tens of thousands, just millions in Chicago tonight. Throughout the newspapers and everything, the meetings every time. Can you see how this nation is ripe for judgment? If God willing, my voice gets a little better. I'm preaching on the modern Sputnik in a few nights. So then I've got to take something the next night because it really hangs in the dark place. Now, notice, but to see the people of the day rejecting Christ just because of denomination, because of they're more satisfied to watch television and things than they are to listen to the gospel. Their hearts are not hungry. They don't care. Now, they wouldn't come out on a night like this. Many of the rich got to drive limousines and Cadillacs out there that read them ads and so forth. Why, they say our pastor says it's the devil. And they believe him. Oh, no wonder they become twofold child more of hell than there was when they began. Certainly it is true. Now this little queen, she said, I'll go and I'll find out. I like that. Now she never went to see an angel. You know, people's got in their head to this day that if God would do anything, he'd have to do it by an angel. Yeah. Send an angel down from heaven and let him do it. God ne- don't send angels. Man is God's servant. God yeah. preaches the yeah. gospel through man. Yeah. The Bible said that Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. Not an angel, a man. He was so human. And just with the ups and downs like you and I have, till it went over the head of the common people. Or to the, all the people. Jesus was so much human. So much man. Just a carpenter's boy. No education of the world that we know of. Poor man. Where did he get this learning? He must have uh, used his and hank and tote and fetch and carry like we would today. Some, some grammar that wasn't polished up said, what school did he come from? Where did he get any learning? Yeah. Isn't this the carpenter's son? Why he's so human to 
so real and so humble until it went over the heads of the people. They didn't understand it. If it would have been Caiaphas, the high priest, or some great polished scholar, oh, they said, yes, your honor, honor, reverend father. Yes, we, we believe that. But God brings it down to humility, and it passes the heads of the people. Right. That's the way he's always done it. That's right. Now, the queen wasn't going to see an angel. She was going to see a man that God had given a gift to that was really proving to be true so as she heard. So she had to get ready to go. Now, that desert was a long trip, if you measured on your map. It would at least take her three months to make the trip on the back of a camel. Well, you say, Chicago's a little too far from me. I live on the north side. Way down the Lane Tech High School. And it's winter time. If you would just bring it up here to my church or across the street, I'll probably visit once. <laughs> and you're going to heaven. Oh, sure. That's there. You love the Lord. Your works prove what you do. By your fruit, the people are known. If anything is laid in your lap, you don't appreciate it anyhow. It's something that you have to struggle for and sacrifice for. Amen. Certainly it is that you get joy out of. Now, the little queen had something to confront. She had to ride three months over a desert, not in an air-conditioned coach now, but or neither in a Cadillac, but on the back of a camel through hot deserts. For well, what? God had been speaking to her heart, and she was determined to see whether this gift was right or not. There you are. She went three months to find out where it was, and people can't sit in the meeting three minutes to find out whether it's right or not. That's the difference. No wonder Jesus said she'll raise the last days and condemn this generation. Right. Three months over a hot desert. Three minutes in a plush seat. <laughs> what a difference. Come on a camel or in a Cadillac. You get the difference? What will this generation answer at the day of judgment when the Queen of Sheba rises? Yeah. Certainly. What will the church say that's turned the gifts of God down when that bunch of Israelites back there Accepted something it wasn't half as great as what it is now. What will it? Uh, Solomon went nowhere. They come to Solomon. They were hungering. They were thirsting. They were believing. And God was working. Today we're filled and fed and have need of nothing, as we say. And the Bible said, No, not that you are poor, wretched, miserable, blind, and naked, and don't know it. That's the bad part, you don't know it. If a man was naked out on the street and blind and knew it, he'd try to help himself, but when he doesn't know it, that's the pitiful part. Then the man is not mentally right, and the church is not spiritually right, or it doesn't know it. Jesus said, if you would have known me, you would have known my day. Notice, then she had another thing she made in her mind. Now, I don't know, I've never seen it yet, as I said last night. And if you've seen the work of God, then God will, can punish you justly because you rejected it. And she had never as yet seen the work of God. But she said, if it's right... I'm going to support it with everything that I've got. So she loaded camels down with gold and everything else and myrrh and frankincense. If the gift was really right, she was going to support it. It's right. And if God's gifts are right, you don't have to support it so much financially, but you ought to support it with the 
praises of God, with testimony, with leading people to Christ and doing something for the glory of God. Not only your money or so forth, but everything that's in you, you should support the work of the Lord. She laid in the camel. And as she went, remember, with all that gold on those camels, thousands times thousands of dollars worth of gold, and precious jewels, and myrrh, and frankincense, smelling uh, perfume that was very costly. And when she went to see that if it was right, she was going to support it. Now look what a chance she had to take. All them robbers in the desert just waiting for her. But if God has called your heart, there isn't enough in the world to keep you away from Christ. All the threats that you'll be excommunicated from your church, all the threats that they'll lay off at your work, there is nothing that will separate us or stop us from reaching our goal when we really in our heart get right and our objective is right that we're going for the sincere part as to find out if God has did this. If Jesus is raised from the dead, let's support it. Yeah. If he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, let's pay by it. Right. Let's do everything that we can to make the people see the kingdom of God. Yeah. She had to cross the desert. So, away she took. Now, if you are determined, and it's for the right thing, God will make a way. After a while, we see the camels across the desert. The poor little woman sitting up there in the desert winds of blowing, and her lips parching, but her eyes were set toward God. The old camels are stumbling along the road, with a little bitty army of a guard she had, which the great desert full of Israelites could have tucked them in a moment, but her heart was set. If there is a Jehovah God and He's making Himself known, I want to be His servant. There it is. Don't you worry. There was 10,000 times 10,000 of angels marching with that band as it went on. There wasn't an arrow could fly by night or the terrier by night or the arrow by day that could ever touch her. She was bound to find Jehovah. She was seeking for Him with a true heart. So will He do you if you'll just see the simplicity of it. Not God doesn't shine out in some kind of great glamour. He never does. His great hour is to come for that when He reveals Himself from glory. But today He works in humility to do things like He's always done. And here she goes, and the winds blow, and the deserts are hot, but she's pressing on towards the mark of the high calling. She's going to arrive because God will see to it that she arrives. Here she goes, the little woman with all this bunch of men and her little maids around her. And out through the deserts they went. There were no shady places to sit down and rest. She just stayed under a little canopy, canopy of the thing over top of her. And as the old camel beat back and forth across the desert, and the little woman sat there jerking from side to side day and night. Through great dangers, beasts of lions and things in the desert, but she moved on. She was letting nothing stand in her way. All the bishops and doctors and archbishops in the world could have stopped her. She was determined to find out whether it was right or wrong. No wonder she'll stand in the judgment with this generation. She was determined to find out whether it was right or not. And on she goes. And finally, leading by the course, led by the Spirit, she come. You said led by the Spirit? Absolutely. Every person that makes a start towards God is led by the Spirit. Absolutely she was. 
And the great angels guided her right into the gates of Jerusalem. And when she goes up to the temple, now she didn't go up just to set a few minutes to find out. She didn't go just to stay one day. She had to hurry back to her kingdom. She went to stay till she was convinced. That's the way to do it. Just stay till you're convinced. She unloaded the camels and pitched her tents and so forth, and she held her treasures back and so forth till she would set in on the meeting for a while to find out if it really was the truth of what she'd heard. Sure, she had faith to believe it was right, but then she wanted to see whether it was right or not. So as she went up to the meeting the next morning where Solomon sat and they brought to him the things, she began to watch Solomon and know that he was just an ordinary man. And she seen the great discernment of the Spirit of God working through the man. She watched it meeting after meeting. She camped and watched. And finally, when she was thoroughly convinced, she goes and gets all of her treasures, everything that she had, and she laid them at the feet of Solomon. And she said, all that I heard those saints testify about is true, and more than I heard them say is true. Why? It's more because it had come to her then. A heathen woman. Let her stand in the judgment against Presbyterians of the day, Baptists, Methodists, Catholics, Pentecostals, Nazarenes, Pilgrim, Holy Seventh-day Adventist Christian signs. Let them, let her stand in that day as a heathen she was against people that supposed to read the Bible daily and pray. Watch her testimony against these of this day. Yes, sir. She was a heathen woman, but she come, and when she found it was the truth that that great gift God had given, she knew it was the truth then, for she had seen it with her own eyes. And Jesus said that she'll rise in the day of the judgment and condemn priests and preachers and so-called religious people. She'll rise in the day of judgment and condemn this generation who was calling the devil. Think of it. Think of it the day that we're living. My brother, sister, and my friend, God always in every generation, He declares Himself. If the people would unite together around Christ and forget their little differences, what a great thing it would be. But in this day, when He comes to show Himself again, every way, more than He did then, Jesus stood on the banks of the Galilee, and he stood in Jerusalem and in the cities, and he declared, there's nothing I can do within myself. First the Father shows me, and I do what he says. But if I, they seen that he could do that, so they thought he was a spiritualist. But when they seen it come to pass, they know he couldn't be a spiritualist. But their great church status and so forth held them back from accepting it. Nicodemus expressed it well when he said, Rabbi, we know your teacher comes from God. For no man could do these things, the miracles that you do, except God be with him. We know it, but why don't you accept it? Why don't they turn the Sanhedrin loose? Pharisees and Sadducees and all, and say, Go, this is the Messiah. Because it was their denominations and their pride and so forth. They wouldn't let them go to an unlearned person as they thought. He had the learning of God. He didn't need the learning of the world. So God had worked in him. As he had to do Moses, get all the learning of the world out of him first before he could get the learning of Christ in him. And today we try to poke the learning of the world in it, poke the learning of Christ out. That's right, overshadowed with all kinds of degrees. Now today, friends, God still lives. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And now what he said there, Behold, I say unto you, a greater than Solomon is here. Yes. And they called it the devil. Yes. And now he said, These things that I do, it will be declared to another generation after me. Other sheep I have is not of this fold. 
a little while and the world won't see me no more, yet ye shall see me, for I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. The things that I do shall you also. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. All these things that he promised, and besides that, come down in our mechanical age, in the days when we were scientific, and proved it that he was the same by a scientific picture machine. Then what are we going to do? Here it is. If that angel doesn't do the works of Jesus Christ, then it's the wrong angel. But if it does the works of Jesus Christ, then it is the right angel. That's right. For he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. How did the Jews know he was the same? When he told that Jew, that real Jew, that Jew that was predestinated to eternal life, that Philip went and got. And he brought him over there, and when he seen Jesus, he said, an Israelite in whom is no guile. He said, when did you know me, Rabbi? He said, before Philip called you, you were under the tree, I saw you. Amen. What would he do to the generation of the Gentiles in their days? As we are today, he did that to prove himself to the Jews. He did it to prove it to the Samaritans. What will he do to prove it to the Gentiles? If he is the same for the Jew as he is for the Samaritan, he's the same for the Gentile. Yeah, yeah. What does the Gentiles do just as they did? The great scholars and rituals and aristocratic and so forth and the educated and smart and so-called in the world. They say it's the devil, have nothing to do with it. A bunch of holy rollers have nothing to do with it. But God in the great resurrection will take that bunch of holy rollers and condemn the world. That's exactly right. Certainly. Because they have believed. Because they have read it in the Bible and they have seen it for themselves. And they come through cold winds and through snows and everything else to recognize the great gifts of God moving in this last days. And they say, oh, it's my Lord and my God. Let us pray. Lord, our refuge in every generation, the same yesterday, today, and forever. O oh, eternal and blessed God, if we should get up from here right now and go home to our homes, we could go happy and rejoicing because that we believe your word. But we would ask tonight, that is maybe some here that's kind of disheartened, as those who came from Emmaus one day, from Jerusalem going to Emmaus, you walked along the road with them and talked with them and preached to them, and they thought that you had kind of a strange way of explaining the Scriptures. For they said afterwards, did not our heart burn within us as he talked to us along the road? But when you once got them in the little building and closed the door, you did something just like you did before you were crucified and had risen. And they recognized that it was you, for no one could do it like that but you. And they said it was the Lord, and they rushed back with the news. Lord God, do the same for us tonight. Give unto us that which we know that no man can do, just you alone that they might go back to the winds with their souls so full of fire that they'll not even pay any attention to the cold winds. Saying, did not our hearts burn within us? Was not we repaid? Not because the preacher preached or the choir sang, but because we seen Jesus manifesting himself through his people. Granted, eternal God, for we love you and we want to meet you someday when our life is finished here, that we'll hear the voice say, come up higher to a better world and to a better place. While we're here, may we be lights, Lord, to shine in this hour of darkness just before the great destruction strikes and these cities become nothing but powder. Lord, you're always before judgment you send mercy. May the people not spurn it. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Now, folks, I am, I'm not, can't explain 
the things that I know, the things that I feel in my heart. I can't express it. I'm not educated. I had no schooling for preaching. Therefore, I can't make my message just where it should be. And you, I forgive me for that. But usually, Brother Baxter, some of them goes and they do the explaining. And there are preachers who are scholars and Christians, not only scholars, but Christian, born again man. They know how to set their sermons in order that can present it to the people in such a way that they can see it. Now, that is not a gift of mine. I, I'm not able to do that. My gift is, is by vision that Christ's promise would take place. See? And knowing I had no education and so forth, and maybe, I don't say maybe, I believe He intended that I wouldn't have any education. For I'd probably depend on that and what I, than what I do depend on. I'll solemnly wait every word from Him. Now, I believe that He will manifest Himself. And if He will, will it make you go home lighthearted and love Him more and rejoice? If it would, would you just raise your hands to Him who said, The Lord bless you. Is Jean here and, and uh, Jean Gold and Billy? Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, let's see. What, we have one to a hundred last night. And I believe we started from one. We don't never call up too many. Maybe a, anywhere from 10 to 15, something like that. Just enough. You don't, it doesn't make the difference. The woman at the well, if she hadn't have been really consecrated to what that she was listening to, why, it would have never done her no good. The Pharisees that stood and seen Jesus do those miracles of discerning their thoughts and told them, so why are you reasoning in your heart? Why you call me Beelzebub? They never spoke it out. But he knew their heart. And he said that to them. All through the Bible, look at his ministry everywhere. It's not, but he just walked out and said, here, I'm going to do this. He said, I'll do nothing till the Father shows me first. See? It's right. St. John 5, 19. Watch his miracles. Just the people could do it. And these things that's done here at the platform are really not exactly visions, and yet it is. It's your faith reaching to God and pulling from Him the things you desire. Look at the woman at, with the blood issue. She touched His garment and went back into the crowd, and the, Jesus said, Who has touched me? They didn't know. He didn't know who had touched Him. Then He said, I got weak. Then He knew that someone had touched Him. That was her using God's gift. She was using God's gift. Jesus didn't know nothing about it. But when she touched it, he looked through the crowd until he could find her who she was. That was God's gift answering back to her faith. You see it? She believed it, and she herself used God's gift. Then the gift that was in him spoke to the person that had the faith and told her what her trouble was. Then it said her, her faith had saved her. But now when God wanted to use his gift, he just took Jesus and said, Now you go away from this home of Bethany here. After four days, Lazarus go to die. And then you come back and uh, you'll raise him up. Well, Jesus went away and they sent for him to come. But he knew the vision said not to come. For he said he did nothing till the Father showed him. After four days, he said, Lazarus sleepeth. Said if he sleepeth, he doeth well. Said he's dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there. But I go wake him. Amen. That's right. And at the tomb, he said, Thank thee, Father, thou hast heard me already, but I said it for these who stand by. He didn't have to pray, but he knew it. Now, he never said he got weak there. How much greater was the power of God to raise the dead than it was to find who that woman was? But it was a woman using God's gift, or God using his own gift. All right. Prayer card. Joseph just went to find out. Uh, a prayer card P, I believe he said. And... Um, then we had 1 to 15 last night. Let's take uh, 85 to 100 tonight then. Take the last part of them. Now that will give us 15 tonight. And now uh, maybe tomorrow night we'll start. Well, I won't say. <laughs> Let's wait till tomorrow night. And J. J. All right. Then J instead of the other. All right. Uh, J. All right. 85. 
99,500. That'd be 15. Or J85. Who has it? The lady around here. Would you come here, lady? 85, 86. 87. 87. Brother Gene, would you come over here to lead them from the platform? 87. Did anybody have it? 88. Who has prayer card? 88. All right. 89. J89, would you raise your hand? I, the lights are right in here. I can't see. So if you just raise your hand. So uh, 89, is it already there? 89, 90. Oh, that's all right. That's not right. 90, would you raise your hand somewhere? Raise your hand or amen if you can. <laughs> Prayer card J90. Ninety, isn't it here? That's you know. I, I wished if you would come get your car. See, that confuses me. You see, and right here's where I'm not supposed to be confused. See, if you get a car, don't take it. If the boy offers you one, don't you take it. If you're not going to stay, thank you. Ever who turned the light on? Don't stay. If you're not going to stay, well, don't take the car. If you take it, you come. All right. Uh, uh, J ninety ninety one. 91, has anyone got it? <clears throat> oh, what a moment. You don't know how it makes you feel. To stand here, I guess there's at least 500 people, I guess, out there. More? Anyhow, I have stood before 500,000. And taken Christ to a challenge before tens of thousands of heathens. There's nothing to be afraid of. God promised it. His words are just as true as He is true. Now, here's a beautiful scene tonight of the Bible. I wonder what you Gentiles are going to say. Are you going to be as reverent and as respectable as the woman or the Samaritans was when the woman came into the city and told what the Lord Jesus had did for her. And she said, by that, she even told those people, isn't that the very Messiah? Sure. See, scriptures are spiritually understood. How many knows that? You don't read the scriptures or write out to understand them. God said he hid it from the eyes of the wise and prudent. Look, even that vision. I wrote the vision out myself and read it over a thousand times or more. I didn't see that I was supposed to go to India first. I thought I was supposed to go to Africa first. But then when the hour comes, here it is written right out in my own hand. See, I just couldn't see it. It was blinded to me till I went ahead and disobeyed God that He might correct me and show that His words are eternal and can't fail. See, I just couldn't read it that way. Many said, oh, the Bible don't say these things. The Bible does say it. It becomes a reality. And God confirms His Word. Now, we're strangers to each other, I suppose, lady. We are. The lady is a colored lady. Me, a white man. That makes two different uh, colors of people, two nationalities. And that's the same way it was in St. John, the fourth chapter, the Samaritan and the Jew. Both of them different races of people, but Jesus let them know that God was no respect of race, that He made all races. We all come from one father and mother, Adam and Eve. That was the first on the earth. That's where we come from. And our nations and where we lived and changed our colors has nothing to do with God. We're offspring. He has all kinds of trees. He has all kinds of flowers. God don't want us to be all just the same. Did you know that? Wished I could talk to some of these segregationists and so forth. They'd listen a minute. Yes, sir. God made white flowers. He made blue flowers. He made red flowers. He made them different because He wants them different. He made us different because He wants us different. But we're all made to His praises. That's right. This woman stands before me as a Christian. 
She could have been an atheist or a critic, but her spirit, now, when the Holy Spirit has come, makes me his servant. And if I am his ambassador, and you believe that with all your heart, my word is his. His word is mine. That's right. If I went to another nation as an ambassador of this nation, then everything I say, this nation's got to back it up. That's right. Depends on what the other nation thinks about it. Then as I come as Christ's servant, and I speak his words, and he confirms it and shows by the credentials of his spirit that I'm telling the truth, that if you believe it, there's nothing that can stand in the way of getting what you want. All things are possible to them that believe. Now, the audience might know, here we are, first time ever meeting in life. We know not each other. We're just standing here. She was given a card, either by Jean, Leo, or Billy, or somebody. They mix the cards up and hand them out to the people, and they, anybody that wants them can have them. They give a few here and a few here and a few there. Just That's the way I tell them to do. I've never seen them give them out. But that's the way they're supposed to do. And this lady knows that I know nothing of her, never seen her, and this is our first time ever meeting as far as we know. You was in one of my meetings, but never did come to the platform. All right. Then you've seen me. But I might have seen you in the meeting, but I don't know yet. But Christ does. Now, if you are here for some need, you say, I'm, I'm sick, I, got, uh, I have some disease, and I tell you why the Lord's going to heal you, you could doubt that. See, you wouldn't know whether my words is right or not there. But if the Lord will tell you something that you know I know nothing about, then you know that it has to come from some supernatural power. Well, you can say, well, that the devil told him that. Then you get the devil's reward. If you say the Lord told him that, then you get the Lord's reward. Is that right, audience? Now, it's, it's done by her. It'll be to you just the same. I have no idea what's wrong with the woman. I have no idea. But God does. And I don't want her to tell me, because I don't know, I want it to come from a supernatural force to let this little audience that I've just preached to know that God has did this. Then it'll be up to them to judge what they think about it. There's nothing wrong with her. She's a healthy woman. But she has a blissful desire in her heart. This woman has come to me in hopes that I would pray for her and lay hands on her that she might receive the Holy Ghost. That's exactly right. That's true. Do you believe me to be his servant? Do you believe that to have to come from God? Let's see if the Lord would say something else. Just while we're standing here, I don't say that he would. Yes, there is another desire in your heart, and that's for a loved one, your husband. You want him to quit drinking. <laughs> that's thus saith the Lord. Those things are true, lady. Raise your hand. Up. Now, do you believe that that spirit that's talking with Brother Branham, that could make tears flow down your cheeks like that? You have a feeling like you've never had before. See, what is it? It's the Holy Spirit coming on you. See? It's the angel of the Lord that you're in the presence. It's Him, the one who is your Savior and Redeemer. Now, I want to pray for you. Lord God, give unto our sister here the desire of her heart. And that what she asked for, may she go away tonight just as happy as the queen that come from Sheba to see a gift that you had sent to Solomon. And may she go to her home rejoicing and receive what she asked for. In the name of Jesus Christ, God's Son, we ask it. Amen. God bless you. Now do you believe? 
Are you all believing? Are you satisfied? See, it's the Lord. It's God. I have nothing to do with it. I don't have one thing to do with it. Now, I asked you all out there to go to praying. You out there in the line. Out there isn't in the line. I asked you to pray. And to believe. And I have faith in God. Some of you without prayer card. I'm just taking my time because I know he's standing here. Oh, if I could only explain to you, there's no need of trying him. I couldn't. How can you see this? Look on there. It's right here. You don't have a prayer card? You have a prayer card, lady? You don't. Do you believe that Jesus Christ has raised from the dead? Do you believe that he is here in the meeting now? You have trouble in your side and in your leg. If that's right, raise up your hand. Now Jesus Christ makes you well. Go believe. Are you convinced? I be real reverend. I want to talk to the lady. We are strangers to each other. I, I've never seen you in my life. But Christ does know you, doesn't he? And if Christ knows you, then he knows you when you were born. He know, He's fed you all the days of your life and all that you... All that you are, he knows about. And if he will reveal to me, I believe the last lady was here was a colored lady. This is a colored lady. Oh, are you the next in line, lady? There's a white woman. That'll get both white and colored gray. If the Lord Jesus will reveal to me what's your trouble, I will all the colored people that's in divine presence Believe with all their heart, raise your hands, if you will, all of the colored people. This is your loved one. One day long years ago, there was a man going up Golgotha. He had a cross on his back. And the hide was all rubbed from his shoulders. His garment was one big bloody splotch. And his little weak, frail body fell under the load of the cross. And your father, Simon, came and picked up the cross and helped him bear it. Now here stands his children tonight. After 2,000 years believing in the Christ who Simon helped to bear the cross. Sure, he loves you. And he's here to help you if he will permit me to do what that I say that he promised to do. You're here for someone else. That's right. It's a man. Your brother-in-law. And he's a mental case. And you've come to ask me to pray for him. If I could heal him, I would do it. But our faith together in him who is present will do it. Will you believe with me? Lord, I pray that you will grant this request and may our faith not move now, but may it be sufficient to heal that person who doesn't know enough to be accept faith themselves. I pray this blessing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. May you go, sister, and may it be just as you have thought it to be. God bless you. That's a wonderful little book. Read it. It has life. We are strangers to each other so far as I know. I don't know, but I think that we're strangers. I've never seen you. As far as I know, are we strangers to each other? We are. If the Lord will...
reveal to me what you're here for. Will you believe you're a white woman? Now, what about the white people out there? Would you believe this is your sister? Just like the woman at the well. Now, see, I have no powers to heal. You know that. I'm just a man. Like, if you have a husband like he is, see? Or like your son or whoever. I'm just a man. Like your like any other man. But it's his gift. It isn't me that can do it. It's him. He promised he'd do it. Therefore, he permits me to do it by his grace and will. You're here for someone else, too. And that's a mental case. Your sister. Do you believe that God will supply the need for that with all your heart? For your husband also, that's right, arthritis, diabetes, heart trouble with you. Believe now, you can have what you ask for if you just don't doubt in your heart. The Lord bless our sister and give her the desire of her heart through Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you believe white people? Then why do we wait or tarry? Why not you be healed right now if you have need of it? See? See? Now, if you believe it, there's nothing that can take it away from you. See? If you believe it. Now, if God is letting me do this through His permitted will... Surely I speak the truth. Would God give such as that to a person that would teach error? God forbid. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. It's the truth. Remember I say this. A man's got to be born again before he can see the kingdom of God. Your little church differences makes no difference. If you're born again, you're son and daughter of God. And you've got to be born of water and spirit. That's right. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just remember that. Believe that. Accept it. He was wounded for your transgressions. With his stripes you were healed. There's no man on earth that can heal you. No doctor, no hospital, no medicine. We haven't got one medicine that any doctor will say will heal you. If he does, he certainly doesn't know what he's talking about. To heal is to replace or build tissue. No medicine will build tissue. Medicine will take germs and kill germs that's tearing down tissue, but it won't build the tissue. God has to do that alone, which is creation. He's the only one who can create. Satan cannot create. He can pervert what's created, but he can't create. God is the only healer there is. There never was a drop of medicine, hospital, or operation that ever healed anybody. The Bible said, I'm the Lord who heals all your diseases. Medicine's all right. They take it to poison germs, just like rat poison, to poison rats. But it doesn't heal the house where the rats have eat holes in it. You see? That's right. It doesn't patch the place. God has to do that through creation. Operation is fine. It moves them obstruction. Bad tooth, a growth, appendix, so forth. That's all right. It sets a broken arm when it's broke. That's all right. But God does the healing. See? God's the only one can heal. It's nothing, no mystery. It's just truth. We're strangers to each other, I suppose. The Lord God knows all of us, doesn't he? If the Lord God will reveal to me what you're here for, will you believe now? I believe there was two colored women, and this is two white women. Is that right? I think. All right, this will settle. Then we'll pray for the rest of the audience. This ought to be sufficient. If the Lord will reveal to me what you are desiring, then you know whether it's the truth or not. There's something very strange about the woman because every time that I look at her, there's just a vision passes somewhere else. That's right. And there's another woman included in this. That's your sister, I believe. And she's not here. And she's across water. 
in some other place. It's not across Michigan, the lake, because it's a large stream of water. It's Sweden. And she has uh, something wrong that she can't sleep at night. And she's coughing. It's asthma. That's right. Thus saith the Lord. And you have high blood pressure yourself and heart trouble. That's thus saith the Lord. I don't know what I said. It's a mystery to me now. It's like I dreamed it. But that was the truth. That was my voice, but it wasn't me speaking. It was something else using my voice. Now, do you believe it was the Lord Jesus with all your heart? Does the audience believe the same? Then ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. See, Ask for this mountain to be moved, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say shall come to pass. You can have what you say. Just believe it. Or is that a spray sister? O God, our Father, be merciful unto this woman and give unto her the desire of her heart. I ask this blessing for her in the name of your dear Son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Don't doubt. Receive what you ask for. <clears throat> now, as someone, you saw there's someone say, the man reads the people's mind. Come here, lady. You know what mind reading is? Is take a number in your mind and guess at it a while. Now, lady, you just lay your hand on mine. If looking this way with my back turned to you, if Jesus will reveal to me what your trouble is, will you accept it and believe it? May he grant it is my prayer. God knows I don't know you, but he does. But if you will believe him with all your heart, your stomach wouldn't bother you anymore. You believe it's over? Then you can go and well. God can heal heart trouble. It's just as minor to him as a Tuesday. Do you believe that he'll make you well? Yes, I do. As you have believed, so be it unto you. God be with you, my brother, as you go. A while ago when I said uh, stomach trouble, that was your trouble too. Not only that, but you had the same trouble this man has, heart trouble. That's right. Now, do you believe? As you have believed, so be it unto you. Go and may God be with you and make you well. Have faith now and believe. How many is believing out in the audience? Now, look. See, you don't have... Look here. Just this woman. Would you believe, lady, if I didn't say a word to you, would you still believe that Christ would make you well? Go. And the Lord bless you. Take my word for it and believe that he makes you well. Amen. All right. See, that's it. Don't have to be told. What would you do, lady, if I told you what was wrong with you? Would you believe me? If I didn't tell you, would you believe me anyhow? You don't know. All right, I'll tell you what's your trouble. Then you got arthritis. That's right. Go believe and you'll be made well. Amen. <laughs> the Lord bless you. All right, lady. Would you believe if I told you, make you believe more, then your back will get well. Go believe with all your heart. <laughs> Come. Do the same thing. Would you believe that you get well? Then the Lord grant it to you, sister, and it'll all be over. Amen. Let's say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you believing? See, it's not, it's not a telepathy. You believe Jesus Christ to heal that heart of yours and make you well? Your heart trouble will all be gone. It's a nervous heart. All right? Go believing now and get well. Have faith in God. God will grant it. All right? Would you come, lady? Ladies trouble, female trouble. Also, heart trouble, nervousness. All right? Do you believe that God will make you well? Yes. With all, then go, and Jesus Christ will make you well. God bless you. Have faith. Believe. Do you believe with all your heart? Believe. That's all there is. If thou canst believe, said the Bible, 
When I said arthritis just a few moments ago, the lady saying her little scarf around her head, do you believe God healed you the same time with your arthritis? Well, you, you felt it, didn't you? Well, you got it right then. That's when you received it. <laughs> that wonderful? <laughs> what do you think about it? The elderly lady doubled her hands then like she was going to pray. Do you believe God would heal you of that gallbladder condition? you believe he would? Raise up your hand to him then. All right? Now, you can be healed. Amen. Have faith in God if you believe it. What do you think, sitting here, lady? you believe that head trouble will leave you? God will make you well sitting out there? If you believe it, you can have it. Sure. Amen. Just believe with all your heart. What do you think, sitting here praying, got trouble with your feet? you believe God will make you well? All right, you can have it. Amen. Just believe, that's all. Just have faith in God. Certainly. The young boy sitting behind there, you believe, sir, that skin trouble, you believe that God make you well? You do? All right. You can have what you ask for. Amen. The lady sitting next to you there got trouble with liver trouble. Turn to you. You believe you can have what you ask for. Go and believe. Certainly. See, the Holy Spirit's here. I'm just trying to conserve my strength. All right. Was you the next lady to be prayed for? You believe with all your heart? You do? All right. You think God heal that stomach trouble you got? You got intestinal trouble? That's right. You're not from this city. You're from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You got internal troubles, intestinal troubles, and you've been in a hospital many times. At least 15 or 16 times in a hospital for operations. And the doctor says you got to go back again. That's thus saith the Lord. Do you believe me to be God's prophet and servant? Then go. And the Lord Jesus rebuked this devil that's hid from the doctors. But you can't hide from God. Leave the woman. Come out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't you doubt. Believe and you can have what you've asked for. And it'll be over. Amen. Go in peace now. Do you believe every one of you? Oh, Lord. Send your Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and charge this people with thy presence now. And may they be like the Queen of Sheba. May they rise to their feet with the treasures of God in their heart and be healed, every one of them going home tonight, made perfectly whole. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Do you believe it? Do you accept it? Then stand up on your feet and receive it in the name of Jesus. May Brother Bose dismiss you. Blessed be the name of